to Thursday Threads and the 34th Annual Quilt Show at Billings Farm and Museum. I'm Adele, one of the interpreters here at the farm. Today we're going to be talking about quilting. What is quilting? What are some of the different techniques for quilting a quilt? And how are these techniques applied to achieve different effects? A quilt is basically a fabric sandwich it consists of a top layer, which can be a single piece of fabric or pieces of fabric sewn together, a middle layer or batting. Today, most batting is made of polyester, cotton, or wool, and a bottom layer or a back. Quilting is the process of attaching all three layers together so they stay flat, taut and secure. Quilting also provides an additional decorative element to a quilt. Some quilters use stencils and erasable markers to draw designs that they'll quilt onto their quilt top. Before beginning to quilt, it's important to pin and baste all three layers together so they stay smooth and wrinkle free. Also, it's important to use the proper type of needle and thread and choose a thread color that complements the quilt design. Additionally, when quilting, you quilt from the center of the quilt to the edges to prevent puckering. The most basic and beginner-friendly quilting technique is hand tying. Hand tying is suitable for whole cloth or piece quilts, quilts with no batting, and quilts with extra thick batting. Embroidery floss, crochet thread, and yarn all work well for hand tying. In hand tying, the needle should go straight down through all three layers of fabric, leave about two inch, a two inch tail, then come up through all three layers of fabric, no more than a quarter inch to a half inch away from your first insertion point. Bring that up. Again, leave about a two inch tail. I'm gonna snip off the end here. And then you want to tie a square knot. So that's looking from my angle left over right and pull it right over left. And pull. And then just trim the ends to the desired length. If you're hand tying a quilt, it should be evenly hand tied every few inches of your quilt. Quilting is probably the technique most people think of when it comes to quilting a quilt. In the early 19th century and even before, young girls learned how to stitch as soon as they could hold a needle. Quilting was something they do throughout their lives. Quilting bees were multi-generational social events and a productive way to finish a quilt. When quilting by hand, it's important to use a needle that's narrow and sharp enough to penetrate all three layers of the quilt. And usually, but not always, a color thread that matches the color of the quilt top fabric. Some hand quilters quilt in their lap. Some use a hoop, obviously much bigger than this one. Some quilt on a tabletop. Really, whatever way achieves the best result for them. Hand quilting starts with a knot at the end of the thread. The needle is inserted about a half inch from where you want to start quilting. And it's inserted only through the top fabric and the batting, so it doesn't go through the back. You pull it all the way through and you tug on that knot and the idea is to get it embedded in the batting. 
so it doesn't show. Like that. Hand quilters use a rocking motion to send the needle down through all three layers of fabric and then up through all three layers of fabric, loading several stitches onto the needle at once before pulling it all the way through. Now, ideally, the length of all the stitches should match and the length of the space between each stitch should equal the length of each stitch. Sort of like this. I'll do a few more, try to make it a little better. So down and up through all three layers of fabric, making sure everything matches in length and pull it through. Ideally, the stitching on the front of the quilt or the top of the quilt should look the same as the stitching on the back. Hand quilting takes patience, practice, and a lot of time, depending on the complexity of the quilt pattern and the size of the quilt. To speed the process of quilting and ensure perfectly consistent stitches, quilting can also be done by machine. A special walking foot can be attached to a home sewing machine to quilt straight lines. With a free motion quilting foot, a conventional home sewing machine can also quilt in any direction. Long arm quilting machines can quilt even faster and more intricately. They incorporate industrial length sewing machine heads with lasers, large frames, tables, and rollers. They can be hand or computer guided along quilting patterns called pantographs to achieve a smooth taut quilt with an overall quilting design. Today, many quilts are collaborations between the quilter who pieces together the quilt top and the operator of a long arm quilting machine who assembles and quilts the three layers of the quilt. So now let's take a glimpse at the different effects quilting techniques can achieve. Hand tying gives a quilt a soft, puffy surface and creates air pockets, making the quilt extra warm. So does machine quilting when a quilt is minimally quilted like this one. Quilting in the seams of the piece top is called stitch in the ditch. The very dense machine quilting in the background of each applique bouquet on this quilt almost serves as wallpaper to make the flowers and vases pop. Whereas the wavy quilting lines combined with the batik fabric adds to the watery look of this machine quilted quilt. The contrasting thread used in this quilt shows up on the back in a way that allows the quilt to be reversible. And the machine quilting in this quilt is not only essential to the image, but provides striking color and texture, adding interest even to the reverse side. There are almost limitless effects achieved through quilting. We hope you now have a better understanding and appreciation of all the skill and design sense that quilting a quilt entails. You can see all the quilts in this year's show at Billings Farm and Museum by visiting us online or in person at the farm. Thanks for joining us.